chapter 1 verses 18 said the preaching of the cross them that perish is foolishness but under us that are saved it is the power of God amen that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 18 somebody say with me there's a cross connection to the power of God you ever been riding down the side of the road look at those t-shaped poles light poles power poles Transformers on some power lines connected. Hallelujah. One time I was riding to a revival years ago. This is back in 1998. I was in a five month revival. It lasted five months. And back in those days, there were no off nights. You preached twice on Sunday, you preached Monday through Saturday. Hallelujah. Amen. Five months. People were saved during every service. Sicknesses were healed. People that were dying, amen, with death sentences and diagnoses and on them in the, in the hospital walked into revival before it was over because somebody prayed for them in the altar. Hallelujah. Now I remember one night after preaching two and a half months of that, hallelujah, and somebody ignorantly asked me one time, how do you have enough of material to preach that long? Hello. All my response was, Jesus is there. Ain't nothing hard when Jesus shows up. Come on, somebody. I said, I'm just along for the ride. I just, come on. Amen. He, he's the preacher in here. He's the living word. But I remember about two and a half months into that thing, and I was traveling and going back to the revival work where, where the church was at. At the time, we'd have people that would go down to Brownsville and Pensacola to that revival and then that some that was going there that lived in the area they'd go there one or two nights and they'd cover where we was at we had people driving over a hundred uh, over a hundred miles kind of amen and, and uh they was i don't know they was i can't even remember the numbers and the results but amen a whole cheerleading squad in the high school got saved i mean uh, young people was getting saved and throwing their uh, music in the Big trash cans, big barrels that were had a fire lit in them. Come on, somebody was getting sanctified. I'm talking, I'm talking about old-fashioned Pentecost. Come on, church. Hey, man, they would throw their sins away. They weren't selling them down at the yard sale, dispersing the devil and evil. Come on, they were just destroying it, like Acts 19 says to do. Hey, man, they were throwing all their witchcraft into the hey, man barrels and burning them. Young people would walk up and throw the stuff into the burning barrel, and when they would, the power of God hit them. They'd be swinging the spirit, speaking in tongues as it went down. What made it so neat, just adjacent to this Pentecostal church, was a Jehovah Witness. They may gather, praise God, and every every week they'd gather and they'd have to watch people in the yard because church didn't just happen inside the sanctuary. Folks be laid out in the yard, they be laid out in the street. The police have to come, they have to come and monitor, amen, cars and keep people, amen, from running over people because they just people just laid out everywhere, amen. In every service, people were getting born again, radically saved. But I, I remember going to that revival about two and a half months into it, and I'm riding down the road, and I'm thinking, I said, Holy Ghost, if you don't tell me what to say, I ain't saying nothing. Hello? I, and I said, up to this point, I, I don't know what it is you want. Hallelujah. And I was feeling a little frustrated. Amen? I don't know about it. No other preacher ever does that. Hallelujah. Now, I, I was riding down the road, and I looked out my window and I saw the description I just gave you earlier and I saw those power poles with those power lines running through it. And 1 Corinthians 1.18 just got deposited in my spirit and it's been there ever since that way. He said, Marvin, the preaching of my cross is foolishness to them that are perishing. Hallelujah. But to you that are saved, it's the power of God. And I'll never forget him saying there's a cross connection to my power. He said, Some ain't but one message. Go preach my cross. Go preach what I did at Calvary. Just go preach it. Preach the cross. And that night I walked in there and just preached the simplicity, amen, of a bloody Christ hanging on a bloody tree. Come on, church, and what it means to us. And hallelujah, the power of God showed up and demons come out of people. I'll never forget that night. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Devils come out. 
God screaming when they was leaving. Hey man, glory to God. There's been times I've preached through the years on the street. Uh, be out on the street. Uh, on the Oak Street. Everybody's got Oak Street. I don't care where you live. There's Oak Street everywhere you live. And then sometimes it's referred to as the worst street. Uh, praise the Lord God. And I can remember preaching one day and I was preaching on the cross. Preaching about the blood of the Lamb. And here come a woman walking through the crowd. Uh, pushing people out of the way. Well, I'm preaching about a bloody Christ hanging on the bloody tree. Glory to God. Surrendering his will. Amen. Glory to God. Leaving his splendor and glory in heaven. Clothed himself in flesh and blood. Amen. And come and died for our sins. Gave up his place in heaven. Amen. And took our place on that cross. Praise God. And while I was preaching that, here come a demon possessed lady walking through the crowd, pushing her way through. And her foot hit the bottom step of that stage out there in that open air meeting. And when her foot hit the bottom, amen, stage, or the bottom step of the stage, she just froze. And she was trying to go and she, she couldn't go. After a while, she couldn't go back. She couldn't go forward. She just had to crumble and sit down as I kept preaching about a bloody Christ hanging on a bloody tree. Come on, somebody. And being raised from the dead three days later. Hallelujah. Nobody laid hands on her. Nobody touched her. But the devils came out of her just under the power, amen, of the message of the cross. I can't tell you the times I've been preaching just a simple message about this bloody Christ hanging on a bloody tree. Glory to God. And hear people say, Straight. as the healing presence of God comes on them. Amen. And their body is healed. I'll never forget one night I was preaching in a church about this bloody Christ hanging on a bloody tree. Come on church. Hallelujah. And I heard a lady scream out. And as she screams out, she disappears. It's like, my God, what happened to her? Amen. Praise God. He made me come to find out after the service when we finally got her up off of the floor. She said, I was deaf in this ear. But while you were preaching about the blood of Jesus and his death on that cross and how he laid his life down, she said, I screamed because it scared me. I could hear her. And she said, after that, I don't remember much. All I know is the power of God came on me. Yeah. Hallelujah. I can tell. 24 plus years of preaching a, a bloody Christ on a bloody tree and watching cold, calloused hearts. Come on, somebody. Amen. Sinners. Uh, amen. Whose defense is up. Uh, I'll not serve this God. I'm just here to suffice whoever it was that asked me to come. Uh, do what you want to, preacher. You ain't going to bother me. Come on. Hallelujah. And watch them melt. Uh, amen. In the presence of God. Uh, friend, I want you to know Hebrews 10 19 uh, said, Work for beloved brethren. Uh, there's boldness in to the holiness by the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Christ that gives us the free admission, the access to the presence of God that still saves, that still delivers, that still sets the captive free. Somebody ought to lift your hand, raise your voice, and praise this crucified Christ who was raised from the dead. Thank God. Preaching of this cross. His cross. Take your Bibles and turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. Galatians 6, verses 14. Hallelujah. God, thank you for your cross. Yes, Jesus. Thank you for your cross. Galatians 6, verse 14. God forbid that I should glory, save or accept in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Paul declared, I glory only in what he did at Calvary. Hallelujah. He said, everything I am, I am by the grace of God. That was brought to me. He made glory to God through my suffering Savior on that tree. Glory to God. Somebody shout without the blood of the Lamb, I'm lost. For there is no remission, no forgiveness, no deliverance without the shedding of blood. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Without the blood of the Lamb, the church ain't nothing but a country club. 
Come on, somebody. Without Jesus hanging on that cross, come on. He didn't spill his blood. To spill something would have been an accident, but he shed his blood, which was a divine incident. I mean, when you when you start talking about the blood of the Lamb, it's kind of it, it reminds me of Leviticus 14 when 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 the cleansing of the leopard would take place, so to speak, when the leprosy of someone was cured or cleansed, they had to go before the priest, and the priest would have to, so to speak, amen, confirm the healing, and they would go through a certain process, and they would take, the priest would, he'd take the blood uh, of a pigeon or a bird, but get out of here, bird, give me an idea, got me big up, praise God, just a joke, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And they'd take the blood of that bird and, amen, they'd take it, the blood, and, amen, put it on the tip of the right ear, the tip of the right thumb, and the tip of the right big toe. And after they'd placed the blood there, they'd take the oil, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit and His anointing, and they'd place the oil on top of the blood, on the tip of the right ear, amen, on the tip of the right thumb, and on the tip of the big toe. Somebody shout, from head to toe, covered with the blood. From head to toe, anointed with the Holy Ghost. I read that one day and it read me and I heard these words. He said, wherever my blood is applied, my Holy Ghost abides. You, you, you want the anointing of the Holy Ghost to show up? Just start speaking about the blood of the Lamb. Oh, glory to God, I can't tell you the countless times I just mentioned the blood of the Lamb or quoted the scripture about the blood of Jesus over those that were demon-possessed. And what's the demons in those people? They may be tormented. I had a man one night or a young man at this time, amen, stand in my living room, amen, this was years ago, and, and, and the young man used to play drums, amen, in, in the church, and he played the drums for a long time in the church, but then the world began to draw him, come on, amen, and then because the church he was at didn't want him to play the style of Christian music, because this was back in the day when the contemporary stuff was just coming out, and the praise and worship, this was all real new, come on now, hallelujah, and they didn't want a lot of that in the church, and amen, so he thought he'd go on out in the world, and, and I, I remember warning these people like this before, because I just did it the opposite, when I was a young man, I was out in the world doing it, meeting famous people, amen, playing my drums and running up and down the road, slinging my long hair, Amen, glory to God in honky-tonks, nice places, uh, bad places, walk out and see blood everywhere, somebody spilled their blood again tonight, amen, glory to God, and, and so I, I had experienced the other side of it that he had not, and I told him, whatever you do, if you've done it for the Lord, don't go out there, amen, I said, there's demons, there's devils in that stuff, come on somebody, I said, you just don't understand, I said, God has gave you this gift, you better use it for him, not some else, but he didn't listen, he drawn, he went on out there, and he stood in my living room years ago one night as his aunt and different kid people brought him there at his request, because he was now scared one night, he was playing, and then some heavy metal music in a band, glory to God, and something entered him that began to dominate him, and overpower him, he could no longer control himself, see demons drive you, the Holy Ghost leads you, Amen? I had a lady one night stand up, and I told her, I said, sit down, you're out of order. She kept speaking in tongues while I was trying to preach. I said, the Holy Ghost don't need to interrupt himself to see what he's already seen. Amen. Amen. And she wouldn't shut up. Finally, I just went face to face. I said, ma'am, you are out of order. Sit down. She got some mad with me. She got me down to church and said, I had you that know. And the Holy Ghost comes on me. I can't control myself no more. I said, you a witch. I said, that's the spirit of witchcraft. I said, the Holy Ghost don't never come on you and cause you to be out of control. Come on, somebody, where you can't have power to say no or yes. When something overpowers, see, the Holy Ghost empowers. He don't overpower you. He leads. He guides. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. His gentleness makes us great. Praise God. Psalms 104, I believe it's 20. Amen. Glory to God. Demons overpower. Demons drive people. Demons take people over and then in possess them to the point they can no longer say yes or no. This is what happened to this young man. Praise the Lord God and now he's controlled by these demons. When he walked in the room in my living room in my house he was a normal looking guy but when his eyes met mine the Holy Ghost in me grieved and infects the devil in him. His face disfigured. Amen. He began to growl and foam at the mouth in a supernatural force. Grabbed him, slung him up against the wall, trying to get him away from me. Finally, 
And as I walked to him, finally, these demons were just driving down the wall. And you could see in his face he was afraid. Amen. And they got far as they could take him up against the counter. And as I walked, I watched his knuckles turn white. Amen. As he bawled a fist. And I saw the veins pop out on his arms. And I saw him starting to come toward me. I said, oh God, let the angels of the Lord come now. And I watched, I watched with my two eyes. His hands with no man around him. Do this right. Amen. Lord, it got behind him as if somebody had grabbed his arms and pulled them behind him. Glory to God. And I stood there, and as I started to step toward him, and I began to speak about the blood of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. And as I declared the blood, the next words made me forget I was about to cast the devil out. I had to have me a praise break. I took me a praise break dance. I'm telling you what, I had me a fit right there because I got the best compliment I've ever received from anybody that just happened to be a demon. Then the demon spoke out of that man or that young boy and said, I hate your preaching. I forgot I was supposed to be praying for somebody to get delivered. Boy, I would have had that. Wow, right. Hey, man, I would have jumping and spinning and bucking. Come on. I said, now nah, I know why, Lord, some of them folks are attacking me. Even some of them preachers are against me. Come on. I said, they got the same devil he got. The devil just said, I hate your preaching. What was you, what was you declaring to him when he said, I hate? I was saying the blood of Jesus. Oh, the devil can't take it. Somebody shout, the devil can't take it. My God, you start proclaiming the blood of the Lamb. You start talking about this cross connection. The power of God shows up. The oil always comes. Hallelujah. Where the blood, glory to God, has been applied. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood of the Lord. Blood of Jesus and His cross. Paul said, I glory in nothing else but this. First Corinthians 2.2, 2, he said, I've determined to know nothing among you, save or except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Somebody shout, that's the message. Hallelujah. Now, I know there's other things, amen, to teach and to preach. It's written in the Word of God. But my friend, this is the foundation of our faith. Anytime your faith feels like it's wavering and it needs, a, a, so to speak, a charge, just go back to Calvary. Come on, somebody. Go back to that old rugged cross. The old, old story. Come on, somebody. How a Savior came from glory. My friend, I'm telling you what, there's still power there. I said there's still healing power there. In Numbers chapter 21, amen, in the old covenant, under the blood of an animal, amen, glory to God, the children of Israel were doing like a, a lot of church folks still do today. They were murmuring and complaining. And while they were doing that, serpents began to come out of the woods and the sticks everywhere. They began to bite the people of God. They started dropping dead from poison, from snakes. They went to cry. They changed their, their attitude. They went. They stopped complaining. Then they started running to Moses. Ah, 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 please call on God. Please ask Jehovah. Ah, oh, glory to God. They was having a fit. And Moses began to cry before the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, go find you a pole. He said, and take you a brazen colored serpent. Put it way up on the pole. And when the people look up on that pole, hallelujah, they'll be healed. And the poison from the snakes will receive its antidote. And the power of the poison will not destroy them. Glory to God. The poison will lose its power when they look up on that pole. Now when you go to the new covenant, you find Jesus standing in the dark in that night seeker. Glory to God of the Sanhedrin. We find him and his Nicodemus in the night coming to seek Jesus. And Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must I the Son of Man be lifted up. See, when you look at Numbers 21, bronze is the color of judgment. It's a typology, a foreshadow of Christ. And many would say, why was Christ represented in the form of a serpent? A bronze serpent. Bronze, the color of judgment. The serpent represents sometimes the sin. 
and sickness itself, the devil himself, because he's an old serpent. Come on, somebody. Revelation 20, verses 2. But Jesus said, I knew no sin, but yet I took your sin in my body on the tree that you be dead of the sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. First Peter chapter 2, and verses 24. Somebody shout, he knew no sin, but he took our sin. Amen. He was sinless. He was the sinless, perfect Lamb of God, but he took my sin. He took your sin. Not just the ones you've committed, but every other sin. Glory to God, you'll ever commit. That's why we got an advocate with the Father. Come on, somebody. That don't give you a license, an excuse to go around and keep sinning. But my friend, you understand. Amen. The theology. Glory to God, somebody shout one drop of his blood was enough to cover it all. Once and for all, we've been sanctified through the offering of the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10, verses 10. He became the sin. He took the sin, though he knew no sin. He took God's judgment for our sins in his body. Bronze against the color of judgment. The serpent upon the pole. Every time you see an ambulance, every time you walk up to a hospital, come on, you'll see a pole. Some you'll see one serpent, some you'll see two serpents. Come on. Some will have wings at the top of the pole where you think they got it from. They got it from Numbers 21. He made that pole ain't nothing but the cross of Christ. He made glory to God that serpent ain't nothing. He made but Jesus taking our sin and our sicknesses on that cross. Come on. And if you see wings at the top of it, I found somewhere in Grandma's Bible. He made glory to God of Malachi 4 and 2. The Bible said, oh, thank you, Jesus, that there's healing in his wings. Oh, if I had a prayer show to leak, I would show you. He made the tassels come down as you wear around your shoulders. Amen. Oh, bird, you think you got some wings. Oh, glory to God. Amen. At the end of those wings, that's what the woman in Luke 8 with the issue of blood. Amen. Touch was the wings of his garment. His prayer show. Amen. His delete were the tassels that represent the word of God. The commandments of God hang for his sin his word to heal them and to deliver them from all Destruction. Psalms 107 in verses 20. Friend, when Moses lifted up, amen, the serpent in the wilderness, it was a testimony to come of the Christ who would take our sins and sicknesses in his body on that holy pole, on that tree, that Calvary. And I've come to proclaim the message of this cross still saves the lost, still heals the sick, still casts the devil out, and even raises the dead. Hallelujah. You see that pole, that serpent lifted up on it. Tell the people just when they look at it, they'll be healed. We can just really see the cross. It's not to say there's a cross connection to his power. What power of his do you need made available? It's still in Calvary. It's still in this message of His cross. And the songs I sang and the message I'm preaching are two of the different. I was I thought I was going to preach a different revelation of the cross, but I, I got to stay in this area right here. Hallelujah! Somebody shout, "Look on the cross! See Him suffering and dying at that cross." Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Somebody shout, he took it, so why should I keep it? He took my sins, but he took my sicknesses. Every disease, he took it in his body. Friend, if God healed you tonight, and that be your understanding that he did it tonight, you would testify tomorrow how God healed you last night, but you'd be wrong. He didn't heal you Today, he healed you many, many yesterdays ago, if I can say it that way. Over 2,000 yesterdays ago. Come on, somebody. Jesus at Calvary. How the very pain you have in your body, he took it, he came to the cross, and he nailed it there. How dare you say, Lord, is it your will that I be healed? My friend, when he himself has already took your infirmity, and he has bore your sickness at Calvary. Oh, how dare would you 
guilty of God and say, Lord, I know you can't forgive this sin. This is really too big. Lord, I've messed up too much. Somebody shouts, you can mess up and don't have to miss out because the blood is still sufficient. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to clap. Somebody ought to jump. Somebody ought to leave, run, dance, do something. Make some noise because it was the blood that made you a new man. The old man is dead because Christ, the son of the living God, shed his blood on that Roman rugged cruel tree. And friend, tonight you can be forgiven because God said in his word, hallelujah, in 1 John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all. Cleanses us from all our sin. I hope I had all of it. Can we have that door open for just a few minutes? Can we raise that gate just a few minutes? Somebody. We ain't about to let no bird out of here, but we about to let a fowl out. Bird, this is your other chance somewhere yet. You can go out, but there's a foul spirit about to get out. What's this foul spirit's name, preacher? Condemnation. Somebody shout, devil, your eviction notice comes by the blood of the Lamb. Hey, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Then walk out of the place, go out of the spirit. Romans chapter 8, verses 1. First John chapter 3, verses 20. John said, Beloved, if your heart condemn you not, you have confidence toward God. You know why some people can't trust God? Because they feel condemned all the time. Sometimes we're so busy worried about who we need to be that we fail to notice. Thank God, that's a little wild shout. Hey, because you ain't who you used to be. Somebody shout, he's still working on me. Somebody shout, even when I mess up, I don't have to miss out. Anybody 